So it's the end of 2023 and I would like to say that 2023 has been a very good year for me and I've accomplished a lot this year. I've gotten to do a lot of cool different shoots that I never thought I would ever get to do in my life like shooting the final four for one, doing a lot of cool NIL deal, you know, projects with people that are now in the NBA, just stuff like that. I've got to do a lot of cool, you know, events this year and I never thought I'd get to this point. I know I just kind of repeated myself a couple different ways, but I don't know how to describe it. I mean, my biggest achievement of course was the final four and of, I thought I'd wear the Final Four jacket just for the video because again this was my biggest achievement of the year especially because I've only been doing sports videography for about two and a half almost three years now you know I never thought two or three years ago I'd be shooting sports in general that's all besides the point I just want to say that this year has been pretty good we've grown pretty good on social media and especially on my YouTube channel we've getting you know some decent views on there my TikTok it not blew up but it went from like a hundred uh, followers to like 400 in the past month almost 500 now and I'm just very thankful and very appreciative of how successful we've been able to you know grow at the rate that we're growing it's not the highest but it's not the lowest it could be worse I could be got, getting no traction at all but I thought since you know Christmas just passed I hope everybody had a good Christmas by the way I thought that I would do like a you know what's in my bag type video I've never made one of these I've never thought I would make one of these but you know I got some cool stuff for uh, Christmas and stuff so I thought I'd like add that to my bag and I thought maybe if y'all got some new gear y'all could consider adding it to y'all's bag and again everything that I'm going to be showing will be be linked down below under my gear I use link and you can just go there it is an affiliate link so if you purchase anything through that link or anything after you clicked on the link I will get a little commission but it won't you know affect how much you pay at all oh my gosh nerd clusters are so bad so speaking of affiliate links I did get my first payout of like almost what $16 from the past two years that I just never had my bank account linked so now it's linked up and I was able to get paid and I was so confused when I saw like a random $15 like payment to my card I was like what is this for but then I realized like oh shoot the, the affiliate link so yeah that's always appreciated if you uh, use my links down below and yeah let's get to the actual what's in my bag the bag I'm gonna be using is the brevity you know a lot of people use this bag I've had this actually my third one because first one got stolen second one was too small so I upgraded to the large one actually my girlfriend got me this for Christmas or something or my birthday a couple of year, a year or two ago and so it's the white version again I do not recommend getting white because this I've had to wash this backpack like 20 different times and it just gets dirty every single time I don't think it's called white online but it's some gray like I don't know it's weird but it, it don't get it because if you want to keep a clean bag get a darker color get black get the darker gray get something that's dark and won't show dirt as well like no matter how hard I clean it it does clean it you know for you know good enough but uh, the back parts the stuff you don't see it will still get a little dirty because that's where a lot of contact is so that's where it's going to retain all the dirt but if there's any other camera brand that wants to send me a backpack or something out there I will more than happy be uh, reviewing that but anyways uh, to start off this bag uh, we're going to start with the camera you know camera pouch where I keep all my camera gear I'm not going to be showing the actual bag because I don't have enough desk real estate so I'm gonna be recording the top-down view later which is why we have a C stand which I also bought for myself for Christmas and I just bought another one that should be coming in Friday or Thursday or something like that I don't know but I have another one coming in and I'm very happy because I like C stands but yeah this bag is pretty much empty for now so let's go ahead and start showing you what I keep inside the bag so the most important thing I keep in the bag is my a7s3 with a small rig half cage I also keep a NATO rail on top of the half cage just because I use a handle which I'll be showing you in a minute but this camera has been very good for me it shoots up to 4k 120 at 10 bit 422 so whenever I'm able to color grade it helps you know make sure the colors are more accurate than using 10 bit like I'm using my a7 III to record this so if the quality does look a little bit less than it usually is then that's probably why <laughs> but yeah I, I don't know I just love this camera I feel like I've had this camera for over a year but it's only been a few months really I, I was checking uh, like for insurance stuff I was just checking it out I was like damn I only had this camera since like March or May or something like that and I was like it just feels like I've been using this for my, my whole I guess I have because at work we use these cameras but having my own personal one just feels like it's been a good journey but my favorite part about the half cage is that it has this little you know tool that I'm able to tighten up the cage itself or I can tighten up my hand or monitor if I have a handle that needs to be tightened but my tight my handle is a NATO rail so I just tighten it like that for the monitor especially to make sure it's tight onto the handle I use that tool I also have these peak design little uh, lanyard tabs I don't really use them they're kind of just there because I used to use them but I really need to take them off because they kind of get in the way and sometimes this one flips up and it hits the record button when I'm filming and I it just gets in the way so I'm probably gonna end up taking those off but another thing I do keep which is not inside the camera is a battery I keep a battery inside the camera just because I 
need a battery in my camera, but I don't actually use the camera in the battery as the cam battery camera, as the camera battery. This is because I actually use a V-mount battery, which I'll be showing y'all as well. But I do keep a battery or two extra max in my camera bag if I'm going on a run and gun shoot. But if I need something light, then this will be my setup, it would be just the camera with one or two batteries on the side if it's gonna be a quick little shoot. Now next we're gonna be getting into is the lens, which is a Sigma 24 to 70. And I use a Peter McKinnon two to five stop ND filter on here, as well as sometimes if I'm just doing my own personal videos, I'll throw a mist filter. I don't really use it for work, but whenever I'm doing something like this, I would love to have a mist filter on it. Now this lens is very flexible whenever it comes to getting up close and kind of getting that mid range distance, not really mid range, a little bit less than mid range, but it's a very solid like universal lens. Another one would be like a 24 to 105, but you do lose the F 2.8 and you only get an F four with that lens. But again, that's the trade off you're going to get if you want a little bit more range. I love this lens. This has been my favorite lens. My go-to lens, the focus is great on it. It's sharp. It's, it's a perfect lens all around. One thing that does come with the two to five stop ND filter is this little hard case. It's like a metal like screw on lid and you, you know, put this on the lens whenever you want to take it off, twist this off and then you use this as a cap and it just closes up like that. But it also attaches to the actual case itself. So whenever you have just this on the camera, you don't have to worry about where the protective part is. Sometimes I do use a 70 to 200 at work. So I also bought a step up ring, which is a 70 millimeter to an 82 millimeter because that's the size of my filter, which is 82. You know, this one's not the best. It's it's not the worst. It does get stuck sometimes, but I'm always able to get it off. I just use the actual casing to get the ND filter on. I use it and I twist them both at the same time to get this off as well. The only thing is that they do twist like opposite of each other. So it's, it's kind of confusing, but it's a very good little thing to keep in your bag if you're going to be using another lens. So when it comes to SD cards, I do use a type A. It's a 160 gigabyte type A card. I also use the faster, like 300 megabyte a second uh, Sandus SD cards as well. Those are just as good, but I like these because when I shoot a lot of 4K 120, this transfers about 100 gigabytes in a couple minutes rather than waiting like 10 minutes for the other card. So it's a little bit faster. Well, it's actually a lot faster, but I love these cards. They're tough. They uh, will last a long time if you take care of them, especially, but I don't know. I do recommend these are a little pricier. So if you don't have that high of a budget, I would recommend the 300 megabyte second cards and again they're both linked down below so go check them out so i was trying to take the monitor off the handle to show you the monitor but i was using the little tool and it just broke here's a little replay of that happening damn no way yeah that's very unfortunate i mean luckily it's still able to be used but i just you know i there's another tool that i have that i could use to show you later but yeah that's very unfortunate. I don't want to break this even more. I, I got to figure out how to get this off. But yeah, here's the monitor. I'll show you all that in a second. Luckily, it still fits on here. <laughs> but yeah, so the next one is the handle. It's a NATO rail handle and it just clicks and slides on on this little NATO rail. Um, it's I'm not a light die. I don't know how long the light was dead. So we're just going to pretend like that never died and we're going to fix the battery real quick. All right, so the light's back on. We're gonna pretend like that didn't happen. But back to what I was saying is that this NATO rail, it's not the best one, it's newer brand. And as you tell the pins kind of get stuck, they don't go in. So sometimes I have to hit it down, but we're not gonna be doing that. Sometimes I have to hit it down. So what I'm gonna do is just slide this in. And then all you have to do is just tighten it up like this. And you know, it's, it's pretty sturdy. Like I've, I've used this NATO rail for a while. The only thing is that I would recommend getting a taller NATO rail if you're gonna be using this combo because it does eat away at the camera. It's eating away at my camera because when I tighten it, it presses and rubs, the handle itself does. So I would recommend getting a taller NATO rail if you really care about that. I personally don't because I'm gonna be using this camera for years. So it doesn't bother me and I will keep this camera even if I'm done using it. So yeah, go ahead. If you want to take care of, better care of it than I do, then use that. The next thing I keep in my bag is a Ninja V monitor with a SSD on the back. This is a lunchbox SSD and I had to take apart a T5 SSD and put it inside of this. And then all you have to do is slide in the back. It's a lot smaller than having the uh, attachment that comes with it whenever you put an actual SSD inside of it. So I do recommend this one a lot more. It, it's a lot more low key and it looks a lot sharper on it. But but next I have the small rig um, I don't know what kind of it's just like a quarter inch mount and it uh, one thing I love about this one is that it does have the cold shoe but you could also screw it in at the bottom if you want to like put it on a stand so somebody else can look at it it also comes with this little Titan like wrench right here which is a lot better than the original version which you have to use an Allen wrench to adjust it so if I want to just have it on my camera I can loosen up just a little bit and then I'm able to adjust it freely without it, you know, just dropping like that. Now I do use a dummy battery attachment for this. I have a D-tap cable that I attach to this so I don't have to, you know, plug in an actual battery because that just makes this a lot heavier. Of course, 
course, adding AV mount battery makes the whole setup a lot heavier, but I do use a dummy battery just so I don't add weight to it. To connect the camera to the V mount battery, I also use a double right angled USB-C Condor Blue cable. Uh, I love this cable, it's pretty sturdy. It wraps up around the cage, the mount holder pretty well like that. I'm able to plug into the camera and the V mount like this. That's pretty much how it sets in the side of the camera. I never had any really any issues with it, so I recommend this. For the monitor, I should have mentioned this, but I have a Condor Blue HDMI. I do want to get right angle ones, but another $20 on an HDMI cable when this one still works fine, it's just hard to pull the trigger on. So I haven't upgraded to a right angle one, but these are great. I do recommend the right angle ones just so they don't you know, stick out like this whenever you're in the monitor and it'll just be straight up and down. The cable come down. It's a lot cleaner and it's a lot safer for your cables. Next will be the small rig V mount. And I love this one. It's uh, It slides into the Arco Swiss mount of my camera cage. So it also extends and you can tighten that up. To tighten the actual camera to the mount, you just use this. And then on top of that, you get adjustments. So if you want to see the screen, you can literally just tilt this back. The battery's right here. And then you can adjust your screen and then you can just flip it back up, lock it down. And you know, it's pretty sturdy. And the best part is, is that if it does start loosening up, you can just stick a tool in here, an Allen wrench and tighten it up or back here as well. And it'll keep it from being loose. Now I did get a new V mount battery, which is the ZG Cine 160 for my camera rig, because I do a lot more client work. So, or corporate work, I should say, whenever I do that, it's better to have a bigger battery so I can run my camera and monitor for a lot longer. The best part is about these is that it has pass through charging. So like, let's say I'm using this, I can still plug this up to the wall while it's you know, powering the camera and the monitor. So it, it's very good batteries to have. Uh, I recommend these. They're not the most expensive ones. They're not the cheapest ones, but they're pretty solid for what I have. And this one actually has two D-taps, which I don't really need to because I only have one D-tap port, but I guess that's fine because if I ever do need another D-tap, I'll have another D-tap. The only reason I liked the V90 ports a lot better is because it has one D-tap, of course, but it also has a USB out. And for my mic that I'm gonna be showing you on in a minute, the mic can only have a certain output, which is very very low and this port is able to provide that if I use the USB-C output it doesn't work to charge it so it's very good to have this like slow like output port and it also has again output right here on the side like the 160 did and you know this is an all-around good battery this will last me a whole basketball game plus pregame now if I was to do a football game I did have to charge this up during halftime a little bit but I'm pretty sure if I had this one this one would last me the whole football game I'm pretty sure of it and if not I would have this one as a second battery backup but I will most likely just be needing the V90 for regular basketball games now for audio, I use the DD V mic D3 Pro and I have a Rode like dead cat on it and it works pretty well. You know, it has, this is from an old mic that I had, but you know, I haven't had any really bad issues with audio with wind. I think I might have the UK Canada edition because it says UK CA. I could be wrong. Yeah, it was cheaper on Amazon, so I bought it, but yeah, it's cool. I like it. Pretty good mic. It has uh, the gain knob right here. I usually keep it on zero and just internally adjust the gain inside the camera, but yeah, a solid mic and it also has phantom power or plug in power whenever you plug it into the camera and power the camera on the mic will turn on if you have it on already if you turn the camera off it'll put the mic in low power mode so it'll turn orange and that's how you know it's in low power mode if it's still green then you have some problems another great thing is that this does charge USB-C but this is the one that does need a lower output so I would keep like a small Apple power brick maybe if I were you or you can just have this VMO battery with this low output USB-A port and you'll be fine now if I'm gonna be shooting either two people or a two camera setup I will be using my tentacle sync system this is because these are both time code so these little time code boxes I can plug this into the camera and it'll run like a time code feed to the audio port or through the audio port and it'll make like a weird feedback noise but if I have like an FX3 or something you could actually jam time code straight into the camera with this so that's another great feature I you know have an a7 III and a7s3 so this you know just has to get jammed through the audio port and then they sync up to these tentacle sync track E's this is a sync E by the way I don't think I said that but this is a tentacle sync track E which is basically like a recording device you can plug in your uh, lav mic into here which I don't have plugged in because it's in my bag and I didn't feel like taking it out. You can also listen to your audio through there as well. I don't think you can listen to it while it's recording, but I haven't tested it out. Another thing is that these do record 32-bit float, which is basically like raw video, but for audio. So it's like raw audio files in a way. And you're able to adjust your peaking. So the audio will never peak unless you overload the capsule of the mic. But also if you record very low audio, you're able to pull it up because sometimes people don't talk as uh, loud as you want. And the best part is, is that they actually sync to this app that I'm using right now because I'm using one of my devices. And I think I've shown this off 
a couple times, but it's uh, it just it's great to have it on the phone, and I know that the audio is recording, and if I want to monitor it, I can. But it, it's a solid setup that I have going here. This is another mic that I have that I will also be carrying sometime. It's a Sony UWP D21, and these are very solid mics. I've used this for my whole YouTube career for the most part. A lot of YouTubers use these, and they're great for like just running gun shoot. The only thing is that they are like frequency based, so if you're trying to you know record around a bunch of people that have a bunch of wireless connections going on, these are gonna have a lot of interference especially if you're near like radio stations or TV stations these can have a lot of interference I've had it pick up like a in Spanish channel one time whenever I was out in public and I was like Telemundo nice but it was a it was a very weird experience having that to happen these are very good mics as well and the best part is that you can monitor your audio out through the headphone jack or not through the headphone you can do it through the headphone jack as well you can also monitor it through the device but I do recommend the headphone jack and the camera because you can make sure it's feeding to the camera and if it's not you're just listening through here you won't know you know they're not 32 bit float but I've never really had too bad of an issue unless something very loud is going on then it tries to condense the audio down a little bit and it sounds a little muffled and weird but it fixes of course after but these are very solid mics I do recommend these as well okay so that's pretty much it for the camera section next we'll be going into where I keep my SSDs and I keep those SSDs in this front pouch right here and I have a bunch of crap in here that I'll be showing you now of course I need a bunch of USB-C cables, so I have a bunch of these laying around. They're all for my SSDs, which are the Samsung T7s and T5s. So those are very good drives. I'll show you all those in a second. But what I also keep in here are my SD card holders. These are small rig SD card holders. This one has a type A, you know, slot. So I use this one a lot more. This one right here just has three SD ports and a couple micro SD ports. So, I mean, these aren't, as, it's not as good. I bought this one when it first came out and this one came out, you know, not too long after. And I was like, crap I really needed this one so I went ahead and picked it up they're like 10 bucks each they're not too expensive and they're metal so they're very good I recommend them and they're very slim too like literally here's my finger here's the comparison they're pretty slim this is perfect because I can show you all three of the drives I have I actually have you know more but these are the three types that I have I keep them in these lock and lock containers because you know just in case to protect them from water or whatever but they're also you know very small and compact and it keeps it all together but the my favorite one are the t7 shield because these have like a rubber outer shell I have a couple of these and you know this is my freelance one but I love these This is very nice they're very fast for what they are they're a thousand megabytes or 1050 megabytes a second transfer uh, read and write speeds as well as the regular t7s which are a metal casing now these are a lot thinner and a lot more portable you, you know can keep these a lot more of these in your bag than the t7 shields they're great too but they're not as protected as the t7 shields now the original ones that I used to buy were the t5 shields these actually came in clutch whenever my first hard drive ever failed I had lost almost 600 gigabytes of storage and I was able to put it all in this because this was like a, a one terabyte I do recommend getting the two terabytes because you can you know of course get your money's worth out of them but you know the one terabytes are all right and this is actually what I used to put into my monitor SSD I actually just broke this down well not this one but I broke it down and you know unscrewed it you have to peel back the tape it was a whole process but yeah these are pretty fast too they're like 500 megabytes a second not as fast as the T7s but they get the job done all right so I was just hit with the curse of the a7 III where it has a 30 minute record limit and I lost like the last 10 minutes of my recording so I'm here again re-recording it so the last couple things I keep in that pouch or power cables in a power brick the power cables I keep in there are my MacBook MagSafe charger I also keep a few USB-C cables in there just because you know you never know when you need to charge something USB-C I always use this to charge my phone sometimes my laptop and my camera gear and stuff like that so this comes in handy this is an anchor 100 watt charger so it is strong enough to power all those and it's also a data cable so if I needed to use it for like an SSD or something it'll work just as well but it is a little bit slower it is limited to like 400 megabytes a second or something like that so it's not the fastest cable in the world but it'll get the job done for when you need it now I do keep an iPhone cable in there to charge my business phone as well as my headphones now when it comes to a power brick I don't keep the MacBook one in there anymore because it is a little bit big and also because for Christmas my parents gave me this anchor JN prime power brick now this power brick can charge your MacBook and your iPad and other devices all at once at 150 watts so it's very solid very small and it's a little bit heavy but it gets the job done now we're gonna get into the top part of the bag I also keep an air tag in here somewhere hidden that I will never disclose and so it's a very good thing that you're able to secretly hide stuff in here there's also a little passport pouch before I get into the actual pocket that keeps some you know change and stuff in there I keep you can keep your wallet or whatever you want in there but let's go ahead and get into what I keep into the top main compartment now I'm gonna skip all the little things I keep in there such as like chapstick hand sanitizer and stuff like that but the main thing I keep in there is my airpod maxes I use these to edit they don't have you know much latency at all so they're very good for editing uh, to me at least I don't notice it they're also you know beaten down so these are given up so hopefully they drop some new ones soon so I can cop those but I love my airpod maxes for editing the noise cancellation is great and you know it's all around good headphone for you know video editing another thing I sometimes 
sometimes keep in there is my little notebook. Uh, I can use this for like writing down notes or like if a client calls me, I can write down what they want or the things they need done. So I have it all together in a notebook. I also do use like Notion and stuff for like my personal like YouTube videos. So there's a bunch of different ways you can keep track of how, what you're gonna be shooting and stuff like that. But I do like this little, you know, it's like a $10 notebook from Walmart. So it's nothing crazy, but it's, it does, gets the job done like all the other stuff. Another thing I do keep in there sometimes is my MX Master 3S. It's a good little, you know, mouse to keep in there and it's nothing like crazy it's nothing heavy and it's very light and it's very quiet when you click so i do keep it in like a crep protect shoe case um this is just to protect it and because i didn't feel like spending like 12 to 20 dollars on a little case for that mouse so this little crep protect shoe cleaning case they clean that's my room so you yeah, have this little shoe cleaning case you know is good enough for what i need so i use it now for the last and final pouch which is the laptop pouch i actually keep two things in there can't really show you on my laptop in this video because i'm using it as a monitor because my monitor i had to demonstrate with it's an m1 pro maxed out you know completely maxed out for m1 pro not the m1 max but the m1 pro and the only thing that's not maxed out is the storage because their storage prices are ridiculous i do want to eventually get an m3 max you know completely maxed out that's like five six grand something like that after taxes so i think i'm gonna pass on that for now unless somebody wants to just give me one the only thing it struggles with really is like intense like after effects and stuff like that so it does you know slow down a little bit there but other than that this gets a lot of most of what i need done now the last thing i keep in there is my ipad air and i bought this case used it's like a keyboard case off of amazon for like 150 dollars off so can't complain there it has an apple pencil which i barely use but it's there if i need it and this keyboard case is solid for like whenever i'm on a plane and i want to type or if i want to watch a movie or something it's like a stand as well so it just all works out all in one and you know, highly recommend having an ipad air because it's a lot cheaper than having an iPad Pro. So yeah, this is gonna be pretty much what I keep in my camera bag for 2023 for the most part. Now, of course, I'll condense the bag down a little bit if I need it for a lighter running gun shoot. Like I said, this is the end of 2023 and this journey for this year has come to an end. Now, I can't wait to see what 2024 holds for me. I am graduating this year, so I gotta figure something out. I gotta, you know, start applying to places. Hopefully some opportunities come up. We'll see, I don't know. Nothing's guaranteed, so we'll just go from here. But yeah, I do wanna say thank y'all again for all the support on the channel and support in public if y'all see me in person i do appreciate it all i do love to help y'all out even though i'm not the best videographer or editor out there i do like to show you what i've learned and the experiences i've experienced and just pass it on to y'all and hopefully it helps y'all out even some people that i watch on tiktok and stuff are following me back so it's great to see that they are supporting me as well as much as i supported them and everything's working out so i'm gonna leave it off with this i do hope y'all had a merry christmas and i hope y'all have a happy new year and yeah i guess i'll just see y'all in 2024 bye yeah. Just don't give up